This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morris, and this week we're interviewing Bates Director of Athletics, Jason Fine. Plus, we chat with our Bobcats of the Week, swimmers Alexander Ignatoff and Aaron Bucky. That's coming up on the Bates Bobcast. The women's and men's swimming and diving teams took on Ivy League opponent Dartmouth Friday at Tarbell Pool. While the Big Green prevailed overall, the Bobcats impressed with the women's 400-yard medley relay and the men's 200-yard freestyle relay taking first place. On top of that, senior captain Alex Bedard won the 200-yard breaststroke. Meanwhile, junior Alexander Ignatov finished third in both the 200-yard individual medley and the 500 freestyle. His 500 time was his fastest for Bates in season of his career. For his efforts, Alexander Ignatov is our male Bobcat of the Week. First of all, you know, the meet against Dartmouth, it's a home meet against an Ivy League opponent. That's not something that you've done before here at Bates. What was that experience like? Uh, I thought it was a fantastic experience to get to race a Division One team. Um, we originally planned to race them in a couple months when we were up at Middlebury, um, but based on our scheduling change, um, they actually came down to swim us um, before they go to um, on their training trip. So it was a great opportunity to race some really fast swimmers, um, and we saw that we could actually do it considering that the women won the first event of the meet, which was the four medley relay, and I think that really set the tone um, to the fact that we could actually race these guys and maybe even beat them too. You're normally a distance swimmer, but one of your events against Dartmouth was a 200 IM, so how'd that go? Uh, the 200 IM went very well. Um, personally, it was one thing, one of my best in-season 200 IM times, um, unsuited with no tech suit on. Mm. Um, and it was really cool getting to race some of the um, uh, some of these really fast Division One swimmers. Um, the top guy got a new pool record, so that was cool to see that happen. Uh-huh. Um, but me and my fellow Bobcat swimmers did have some really good competition uh, in that event, and I was beaten by my fellow... Um, I am training partner Jack Johnson, so shout out to him. Awesome. And then um, the other event you you got third in was the 500 freestyle, right? That's correct. The 500 yeah. is a little bit more of my forte yeah. as, a, as a distance swimmer. Um, and that was a really cool race because the person who won also set a new pool record as well. He actually swam my best time. So it was interesting to see um, uh, that type of speed uh, this early in the season. Um, but I was in second for most of the race, but then um, a, a, a Dartmouth swimmer came over to my to my right in the next lane, and he gave me a little bit of a race for the last 50. Um, he unfortunately out-touched me by, I think it was 0.2 or 0.3. Uh, but nonetheless, it was, again, fantastic racing opportunity. Yeah, so in a race like that where it's so close between you and another swimmer who's right next to you, how much of a sense do you have of his presence? Um, so I typically breathe to my left, mm-hmm. and he was in um, the, rain, the lane to the right of me from the block side. Um, so coming back on the final stretch, I was breathing to my left, and I could see him on my left as well. Um, so when it gets to the flags, you just put your head down, spin your arms, and just hope for the best. Um, unfortunately, he won the race, but uh, I still congratulated him, and it was very cool um, to really have a race come that close to the end. Peter said that the crowd was really getting into it during that particular race because it was so close. How much do you sense the crowd, if at all? Um, I didn't hear the crowd, yeah. but um, since uh, I was a little bit closer to the bait side where mm-hmm. my teammates were, um, I saw them. I saw them cheering me on, some of them squatting down and just doing kind of like a rotating of their arms to tell me to speed up. Um, and I really saw them, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to turn this on for them. Um, but, yeah, great race there. Tell us a little about your background. When did you start swimming? I mean, everyone swims when they're a little kid, but when did you start, like, racing and stuff like that? Right. So I think I started when I was eight years old. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first started, I had one of those normal um, bathing trunks, swim trunks that yeah. everyone wears to the beach now. Um, I remember they, they always fall off whenever I dive in the pool. So that's when I was told to get my first official uh, swimsuit. Um, and then from there, just kept swimming all the way through age groups, um, switch clubs and then through um, my high school I swam with the Wilton Y Wahoo Swim Club um, very prestigious club team one of the best teams in YMCA and in the country uh, when I was there at the time um, really kind of went to the next level as a swimmer great so that transition coming to college how do you decide to base was the place for you right so I decided I wanted to go play someplace small yeah. um, I knew that I wanted to develop those individual friendships uh, with my professors my classmates and with the athletes um, that I spend so many hours a day uh, training with and um, 
When I came on my recruiting trip in September of 2015, in my senior year of high school, uh, it seemed that anywhere I went on campus, there was always something to do, and there were always people there that wanted to meet me. And I thought that was something incredibly unique about the school, um, and I think somewhat different compared to other schools I visited, was uh, my teammates, or my future teammates at base, wanted to know who I was, uh, where I was from, what I swam, my interests, um, and how I could contribute to the community here at Base Athletics and to the college as a whole. So now as a junior, how have you seen your swimming kind of develop over these few years? I mean, were you a distance swimmer coming in, or did that change here perhaps? I was a distance swimmer coming in. Yeah. Um, primary, primarily was distance. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that um, Peter Casares, our head coach, and uh, Bill Wallace and Vanessa as well, um, is they say you're only going to get better if you change. And um, I found great success in switching over to maybe a more stroke in some IM. Um, and I've seen some great success there. Um, I've seen a lot of my teammates get a lot faster by making changes, and I thought I should do the same as well. Um, they motivate me to change, and I hope that I motivate them to change and get better as well. Great. So the IM, what strokes are those? It's um, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, freestyle, so all four strokes. Oh, okay. um, so in a 200 individual medley, it would be a 50 of each stroke, and then a 400 individual medley would be 100 of each stroke. Um, and I think what's so great about it is there's just so much opportunity to change and to get better yeah. um, with each stroke. And I know that um, I've worked uh, a lot with um, Coach Wallace, who's my primary coach over in the distance lane, um, on increasing the tempo in my backstroke. And it's really helped a lot. Um, and I'm pretty proud of that change. I know butterfly can be really tough, can't it? Butterfly can be pretty yeah. tough. <laughs> um, but, you know, when, everyone, when everyone's in the race, um, you know that you're kind of um, averaging the pain with everyone else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Especially in practice, uh, when all of my IM training partners and um, flyers are doing the same thing, um, it just motivates me to change, do something better, um, and to get up and compete and race with them in practice. So I understand Friday morning, Brian Early flying to the training trip, right? He gets uh, going? Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Yeah, okay, Saturday okay. morning. Friday we'll um, have some exams, last day. Okay. Um, but Saturday morning, yeah, well, a lot of us are getting up early. We're all going to fly down to Florida. Um, I think the temperature down there is going to be in the high 70s, so it'll be a nice, um, much warmer climate than it is up here right now. You, you do your training outdoors, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. We have two practices a day, morning and afternoon, usually around two hours each. Um, and then we spend the time in between those practices just relaxing on the beach, uh, walking around Deerfield Beach, um, or just exploring in general. So, um, and training trip is pretty awesome. For one, it's in a much warmer climate, and we get to spend some time on the beach uh, which is obviously something you can't do here in Maine right now. Um, but since we're spending so much time together, it's a great bonding experience, too. Um, I get to meet a lot of the, uh, the freshmen a little bit better um, and even get to know some of my upperclassmen and kids in my own class as well. Um, since we're, I mean, we're all doing the same training, we're all training hard, motivating each other, um, and then we get to relax, sit next to each other on the beach. I was going to say, because it is such a big team, it, my, this training trip probably is very helpful in terms of actually getting a lot of time with different people you maybe not normally see a lot. It is, absolutely. Yeah. And um, the rooms are normally organized with around three people per room, mm -hmm. and um, it usually ends up that all three people are from different classes. Okay. So in that way, um, obviously the people you're living with, you get to know them pretty well. Um, but the training trip is interesting. Maybe you'll be sitting next to someone on the beach they've never talked to, or you're in a lane with someone, or sitting by the pool, and you just have a little chat with them, get to know a little bit more about them. Um, so we bond through that and, of course, bond through the hard training as well. Awesome. So last question for you. You know, after you turn from training trip, you, obviously the meets, you know, start to heat up in terms of more and more of them before NESCACs and NCAAs. What are some goals you set in your mind maybe for the rest of the season? Well, I think some of the biggest goals, maybe some short-term goals I should start with first. Um, we still have a couple more dual meets left. Yeah. Bowden and Colby, uh, very big. Uh, I remember my freshman year, we were CBB champs. Mm -hmm. um, last year we were not. We, unfortunately, we're not. Um, so uh, we have a rejuvenated freshman class, uh, probably one of the biggest I think we've ever had. Um, and there's a lot of talent there. And it's really great to see them. Um, I mean, sometimes they're the ones winning some heats at some of the past meets we've had. Or they're getting second or third, and they're beating some of us older guys. So it's really cool to see them race fast. Um, kind of reminds me of when I was a freshman. Um, and they kind of push me to go yeah. a little bit faster as well. Um, and then for the long term, of course, NESCACs, uh, the whole team gets to go. Uh, most of the team, and um, we're going to see how well we can do. Um, I think our best finish has been fifth place. Um, and of course, Nescox would like to beat our main rivals, Colby and Bowden, uh, try and maintain that from CBB, um, and see how many people we can get to nationals. Um, and, you know, Nescox is so great because everyone tapers, everyone puts on a suit, and everyone's going fast. 
And we start off the meet with the 800 free relay on Thursday night, which is somewhat of a tough event. Mm -hmm. um, but people really get up and they race for it. And I think oftentimes coming out with good swims on the first night really sets the tone for everybody. Um, you can see your friends go fast, and you know what? You think you can go fast as well, and that's usually what happens. All right, Alexander Ignatoff, Mel Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you so much. On the women's side of things, sophomore Aaron Bucky anchored the winning 400 medley relay with a lifetime best split for the Bobcats. She also took third in the 200-yard backstroke and fifth in the 200-yard IM. For that, Aaron Bucky is our female Bobcat of the Week. A meet against an Ivy League opponent, Dartmouth. What was that experience like for you, um, you know, them coming to Tarbell Pool and taking on a Division One program? Um, yeah, it was really exciting. Um, this is the first time they've ever come here, so it was a good um, chance for us to kind of race a D1 Ivy League school, and our team did super well against them. Yeah, everyone kind of stuck in there, like held their heads up and really like fought to the end, and it was very exciting. <laughs> Take us through the opening race of the whole meet and a winning race for Bates there, the 400-yard medley relay. Yeah, so the medley was first, um, and then I was last on that relay. Yeah. Um, but the I guess what like kind of got me mostly excited for it right off the start was like the three other girls that were right in front of me. So first it was Izzy and then um, Emmy and Caroline. So they all swam like super, super well. So there's no way I would have been as excited or had like my heart rate up as, as it was without them. Um, but yeah, it was a great start to the first, um, like the, the entire meet against them, and great to kind of get the to win it and then start like set the tone for the rest of the meet. Uh, was the team in first when you jumped in the pool? Um, yeah, or it was close. So um, yeah, so the backstrokers were first, and it was all pretty even. And then next was breaststroke. So Emmy had a great hundred breaststroke and really kind of. Um, like got us ahead and got us really um, really like up and running and excited for the um, rest of the race and then Caroline kind of held on and then I was hoping of not messing it up and um, kind of finishing strong. Do you typically anchor relays? No, usually in, in the medleys I'll swim backstroke okay. so it was kind of like new for me to um, anchor so I was really nervous but um, I guess it turned out good in the end. What was your reaction when you touched the wall and saw you were first? Very happy, um, very happy. You can kind of see, especially in freestyle, like all um, your team on the sidelines. So I could kind of see them all like jumping up and cheering um, for me during the race. So it was like nice to kind of see their reactions and see the boards at the end afterwards. Terrific. So you're a sophomore, originally from Minnesota. So what attracted you to come out east and come to Bates? Um, well, I knew I wanted to swim in college, and I knew I wanted to go far. But actually, my older sister swam at Williams. Okay. So she kind of, like, introduced me to the NESCAC schools and, like, always spoke very highly of Bates. So um, I, like, gave it a try and came on a recruiting trip and, like, absolutely loved the team and loved the school. So it was, a, it was the perfect fit for me. And you don't have to make any adjustment when it comes to weather here, do you? No. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, very much the same. <laughs> Awesome. And then um, tell us about, you know, Coach Casares and how you maybe have worked with him and Coach Williamson and Coach Wallace to help you improve your swimming through your, you know, one plus year here so far. Yeah, they all do a super great job of um, kind of every aspect of swimming. So they all know um, they kind of like contribute their own parts to the team and their own parts to practices. Um, so I really I feel like there's like the perfect balance of like, like the hard work and like the like emotional and physical support through um like out the whole season terrific when did you start swimming like competitively i started swimming for club when i was seven so and then like swam all and then kind of continued club and then swam throughout high school terrific and so you probably knew fairly early on you wanted to swim in college you said yes i yeah. did <laughs> i really did i wasn't ready to give it up after high school for sure and then friday you also swam very well in some individual races mm -hmm. difference for you with individual versus relay perhaps oh i'd say relays are way more fun and way more exciting um it's kind of i'd say like the individuals are also um for the team but the relays are especially for the team um just like I like you don't want to let the like other girls on your relay down um, more so than the, in the than in the individuals. But the individuals are like fun and important too. <laughs> training trip coming up. I understand you're, you're all leaving Saturday basically yeah. for training trip. <laughs> um, what was that experience like for you last year as a first year? Um, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Practices are really hard. You swim a lot, but it's also very fun and it's a good 
um, bonding experience with the whole team um, and nice to be in Florida so can't complain too um, much about the weather so we're all training trip is always a highlight so we're looking forward to going back of the different strokes which is maybe your favorite and why my favorite is backstroke okay. I guess I could say because you can breathe the whole time <laughs> um, True, yeah. I uh, yeah, I guess that's the one that I like kind of clicked with when I was younger and stuck with it all through. Um, yeah, so I guess my I guess my favorite's the 200 back. You don't have to sprint too hard <laughs> right at the beginning. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, but breathing the whole, whole time. I didn't even think about that, but yeah. I mean, timing your breathing is very important in all the other events. Right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, pretty much with all of the, all the other strokes, getting down when to breathe, like and keep, while keeping your technique together, and don't really have to worry about that too hard in backstroke. It might seem like a n- dumb question, but you're doing the backstroke. How do you know when you're getting close to the wall there? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's flags, so okay. you can kind of see yeah, the flags, yeah. and then like I know how many strokes I take okay. before I have to flip around. Yeah. But that definitely took practice and have hit my head on the wall a couple times. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And what's the team dynamic like? Because it's such a big team. I know some women are abroad this fall, but it is such a large team. Alex was talking about how, like, train trips are great bonding experience. You see the same way, kind of? Yeah, it is. Well, we, um, we sp- like, here at school, we spend a lot of time practicing yeah. together, but our practices are split. So there's, like, one, um, like, earlier in the afternoon than the other, and then there's different kind of training groups. So on training trip, we're, like, all together, um, like, drive to the pools together, like, sit on the beach together, um, eat every single meal together. So you kind of do get, like, a closer, like, team afterwards. What are you studying here at Bates? I am re- newly declared a um, environmental studies and psychology major. And what prompted that move? Um well the ES I went to like an environmental studies high school mm-hmm. so it was kind of like a magnet school that focused on like environmental issues so I also wasn't ready to give that side up sure. um, when coming here to Bates and then psychology I always really liked it and kind of like I found out kind of like like learning about myself as learning about how um, like other other people think and act too so I kind of didn't want to choose both so just or choose one so just went with both does the psychology aspect help you in swimming at all in terms of the mental side of it or um sometimes yeah yeah. this year particularly we talked a lot about like stress and how to like Mm -hmm. different strategies of coping with stress which I find very helpful with um kind of balancing swimming and schoolwork and um, like social settings and um, like family stuff too. Terrific. So looking forward to the, to the new year after training trip, what are some goals you have maybe in your mind down the stretch of this season? Speaking for the whole team, I think we'd, it'd be very exciting to win um, our conference meets mm-hmm. so that um, I guess the big ones would be against Bowdoin and Middlebury, um, which are both in January. So looking forward to those and then like the NESCAC championships are always exciting and kind of the time to like have all your work pay off and it's really exciting to kind of see everyone swim well and kind of see everything work out for everyone on the team. All right, Aaron Bucky, female Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. On Monday, Bates Director of Athletics Jason Fine joined me in studio on the radio in Auburn to talk about the current state of Bates sports. First of all, you had the opportunity to check out the swim meet on Friday, the first home swim meet of the year for the Bobcats, and it was an interesting one, taking on Dartmouth, an Ivy League opponent. Dartmouth Dartmouth won the meet, but the Bobcats won a few races, and Absolutely. it was uh, quite the competitive uh, atmosphere. What, what was the experience like for you? Yeah, never let it be said that we shy away from a challenge right, yeah. at Bates. But, um, no, Dartmouth came in, and, um, you know, it was, a, it was a great atmosphere. I mean, the, the pool was really um, packed. The fans were out there, and our pool is, anybody who's been there is um, – it's kind of small as far as deck space goes, so when the teams are out there, it really has a great has a great atmosphere to it. But we came right out of the, out of the gate and and won that first race, and it just kind of set the tone. And I think that you know the expectations from the team were you know obviously to try and win, but also to prepare for the meet of the of the season. So uh, yeah, it was really exciting to be there. And when you're there, what are you doing? Because it's very it's a crowded pool deck. Obviously, what are you how are you trying to do? just walk around the edge of the pool and check everything out, or are you sitting in one spot? I'm trying to I'm trying to hide yeah. mostly and, and stay <laughs> out of the way. Um, uh, Coach Casares did did come up towards the beginning of the meet and thank us for coming and and uh, you know say hello. But obviously, you don't want to kind of um, you know overshadow anything that's going on. You want them to be able to concentrate on coaching. Um, you know the students. It's I think it's nice that they they see you there. Um, but other than that, you're trying to just really be a fan, and stay, it's nice to not have a duty. Uh, yeah. You know, usually at, at most events we have everybody's got a job to do, but um, 
the swim meets, uh, you know, the, the staff was there running, running the show. So really just sat in the stands, talked to a few of the parents. Um, you know, the, the season hadn't gone on. Uh, it's, it's the beginning of the season, so the parents are still happy. It's great. <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> Certainly. And then you mentioned, you know, um, different things we have to do at different home events. Obviously, we had a number of home uh, basketball games this past week and didn't go the Bobcats way necessarily, but I noticed something very different, obviously, in terms of what we're doing like at halftime sure. and um, promotion wise throughout the game. Tell us a little about those initiatives to get the fans, you know, pretty involved in the action there. You know, we're really um, trying to step up our game a little bit as far as the things that we can control from the administrative side. Right. Um, you know, obviously, what goes on uh, on the basketball court within those 94 feet is, is up to the coaches and the players. Um, but and sometimes we wish we could control that <laughs> as sure. well. Um, but you know what? It's it's um, it's been great to see uh, the students and the administrators come out to the games and really pack alumni gym. As you know, we talked about the alumni gym res- uh, renovation project a few months ago when we were here. Um, so to see that kind of open up and have a new. Um, a new look to it and a new new feel that's really kind of rejuvenated that old space into a real traditional fun kind of um, you know Hoosiers type atmosphere. So we wanted to we wanted to add a student section, which we did on putting bleachers up on the stage under under our uh, home basket. We we actually the teams actually switched home benches this year. Right, I saw um, that. Yeah, and really you know num- it was a little bit to maybe change the mojo up a little bit and just do some something different. But also you know when the opposing team is going down that end shooting free throws uh, during the second half, nice to ha- nice to have our fans on that there side go. giving them a little bit of a, of a razz and. Um, we also, uh, you know, we've, we've added some promotions. We've added some sponsorships. We have a couple of student workers uh, who are doing a great job who've interned in minor league baseball and with some um, G League teams and things like that, kind of trying to bring a little bit of that. So we did, you know, uh, uh, Agron Appliance was great and stepped up and gave us a, a, a seat upgrade, love seat that we could, you know, have people get pizza delivered to there from, uh, you know, from mm-hmm. LHOP. And, nice. and, um, and they've been enjoying that. So we've been doing more on social media, as you know, and Aaron's been been great helping us with that and the first couple games been great the only thing we haven't done is win yet uh on those when we've been doing that so i think that um you know these early season games obviously in the nescac it's just it's just tough every game you're playing uh you know a a nationally ranked team so i think after the break we'll be uh we'll be ready to go because we've got a couple young players on both teams well speaking of that it's what december 10th right now we don't have another sporting event at home until january 4th the next sporting event period is december 28th with men's basketball at staten island but uh Staten Island, you're going to go back to New York area to check that out? <laughs> I am. I will yeah. be down road there. Trip. It's a little, little road trip, <laughs> little back, road trip. To, uh, back to where it all started, kind of. A um, <laughs> little, uh, little bit of a homecoming. You know, some folks there know that, that we're coming down. Uh, we were able to do this when we went to Drew also. So the, the Tournament of Heroes at the College of Staten Island is really um, a special tournament, uh, you know, as far as these, these, these midseason and holiday tournaments go. Um, we started that when I worked there. Um, right after 9-11. And uh, we had three former players on our squad that um, that died in the towers. So two were firefighters, one worked in, in the World Trade Center. Um, so it really hit close to home, you know, for everybody everybody involved there. Um, so we thought that to honor their memory, what could we do? We br- there had been an old holiday tournament that had been defunct probably for 10 or 15 years. So we thought, okay, let's bring that back and let's dedicate it to them. Um, Interestingly enough, you know, for folks who are Saturday Night Live fans, Pete Davidson um, right. was actually like 11 years old. That was his dad. One was one of the firefighters who played basketball for us at College of Staten Island. So okay. he, was, he was there with us at the, at the first one. Um, and um, we, um, yeah, I mean, it's been going on ever since. So ever since 2001, 2000, maybe 2002 was the first year we actually had it as a full-fledged tournament. So, uh, so I went with to, to, to Drew. Uh, we were able to get the men's basketball back. Uh, team back there to play against College of Staten Island, which was kind of cool. So when I came up here, I talked to, to Coach Ferba. She had been trying to get a tournament down that area. I said, let me make a call. And uh, so last year, we booked it for this year. So, yeah, it's exciting. So these next couple of weeks when we don't have any sporting events going on, what's on your plate right now? Oh, you know, I just take a break. I go down to the beach <laughs> down in the Bahamas. Yeah, it's go. terrific. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not exactly. No, not exactly at all. Um, I'll tell you what. First of all, let me say, I wish we did have sporting events going on. You know, these seasons are, are so short in the NESCAC, and we – we do all these all these meetings and all these initiatives and all this stuff to try and get to the point where we're 
um, you know, where we are playing at, at night and on the weekends. But, um, no, there's a ton of work to do right now just as far as wrapping. We, we've been wrapping up the fall seasons, and, yeah. you know, just administratively meeting with the coaches. And right now we're heavy into just the recruitment season, and we're, we're just about wrapped up with early decision, uh, the first round of early decision, and heading into the second round. And as you guys know, we have a new football coach. We have a new men's soccer coach. Um, they're both trying to rebuild a little bit. And uh, especially on the football side, you know, you're talking about – a 75 person roster you're talking you need to bring in 20 to 30 new folks a year for, just for that team so we've been working a lot very closely with admissions um almost on a daily basis As a matter of fact i got a call like right before i walked in here from admissions saying when are you free to meet today to yeah. to talk about what's going on so um as soon as i get out of here that's we'll, we'll be back at, at work on that but just trying to help with the with the recruitment and, and then continuing to build our process and our, our our policies and procedures and things like that. So we've got a lot going on, but we will take a little bit of downtime uh, probably from around the 21st, I think, um, you know, until till New Year's, and then we'll, we'll pick right up because we've got a game on the 4th, I think. Right, yeah, home we, game, women's basketball against uh, top-ranked Bowdoin on the 4th there. I was going to say, uh, I think I've told you before, my daughter, my, my two kids went to NESCAC schools, so, uh, and my daughter played two sports, and ice hockey, January, they played – a ton of games. I mean, oh, yeah. they played. That's all they did. There were no classes. They just played games mm-hmm. over and over. Now, does Bates? Do they off at all during in January? When do they come no, back we, after we, the holidays? Yeah, we come back. I mean, they they get a little time off now for finals. Yep. Um we try <laughs> we try to let them concentrate yeah. on class a little bit. Yep. Um, and then uh, they come back right after after Christmas, like the twenty sixth, twenty seventh. Uh, depending on the team, because men's basketball play on the 28th sure. down in Staten Island, so they'll, they'll get a practice in probably, um, and then they come back uh, the second. Probably. Now, what about the student regular student? They come body? back on the, the 6th, I believe. Oh, so they're, they're back think, fairly Yeah, I think the also. 7th is a Monday. Is that, yeah, that's probably the first uh, first day of classes, the 6th or the yes, 7th. the 7th, um, yeah. And then we'll... Um, We'll go from there. So, yeah, they, they come back pretty early. The only problem is, you know, and Aaron knows this, you know, we love to, to get the atmosphere, you know, pumped up in the gym, and we play our big rivalries right during that break. We oh, play wow. Bowden and Colby on, like, the fourth. And, wow. And so yeah. we, we've got to work on that. Yeah, the first one, I guess, with the student's body in general, back men's basketball hosting Thomas College Tuesday night, December 8th, uh, literally a month following their most recent home game. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, it's not easy. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And then uh, men's basketball will also be home that Friday, the 11th, against uh, Middlebury, which is always a good one there. Yeah. Uh, Coach, I know you wanted to ask Jason about the football thing, the playoffs, well, <laughs> or I, lack well, thereof. I mean, I had another question, though, for <laughs> Okay, us. all right. Do you look at the tournament on Staten Island as a semi-recruiting trip also? Chance for people down that area, kids, mm-hmm. young kids, to get a chance to see Bates College. That's, and- that's a great question. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We um, we know that if we're going to be successful, we've got to get out of New England, um, as as evidenced by the fact that as we you know we were just talking about playing Bowden and Colby Bowden on women's basketball side is they're the number one team in the nation, right? I mean, so we know we're building something but we can't recruit against the same kids that that they always are. Um, So we've got to get out of region. I think New York, New Jersey is a great spot for us to be in. People love this when they come up and they hear about Bates and they um, don't really know about the NESCAC and they get up here and they see it. They're excited by it, probably as evidenced by the fact that I'm sitting up here (laughs) never thinking that I might move to Maine. Um, But for students, it's a great experience, and we try to do that in not only in New York, but in D.C. area, Philly area, um, and uh, and then down south, Atlanta, Florida, uh, we need to get into those areas. And depending on the sport, it's a little like, you know, so, so volleyball, for example, they have big recruiting area in California. So they've, they're, tr- they'll try to get out there if they can and get to recruiting events. But if you can bring the team out and play out there in front of, you know, the students that we have from those areas that are now at home in front of their friends and family, that helps the recruiting. Absolutely. Sure. Oh, and, they, and they'll help you recruit. Right. Talking up, talking up the school they went to. The, the question I had about uh, football was... They've been talking about this all week. Yeah, we... Well, the Ivy well it came <laughs> up. It came up because of the Ivy League, actually. But I said the same thing that, that uh, Aaron and I have talked about before. NESCAC doesn't do it either. And that is, in the other sports, basketball being an example, uh, either of your teams in basketball, beyond NESCAC, if they make the NCAA tournament as an at-large bid, they can go and play. Mm-hmm. And the Ivy League and NESCAC does not allow their football teams to do that. Right. Is there a particular <coughs> reason for that? Or? Um, you know, it's a great question. Uh, as someone who is still fairly new to the conference, um, I don't have a great answer. I, 
I know that uh, many of our, our presidents and our ADs and our administrators are, are very rooted in, in the NESCAC, uh, you know, for, for decades. Um, and there, this, you know, dates back to the time, obviously, when we didn't go to the NCAAs in any sport. Uh, and then they started to kind of open the gates a little bit. And as we got more competitive and more competitive, you see the teams that do go, they end up getting three, four, five, six teams in. We end up getting you know, many teams ranked in a lot of those sports. That hasn't really translated to football so much, um, you know, as far as competitively. I, I don't know, um, you know, I'm sure there's a little bit of a concern that, you know, the, the competition within our conference, since we only play within the conference throughout the year, um, would be a lot different as we went out. And it also puts extra strain on class time. You know, missed classes is, is super important for, for our entire league. So, um, you know, I know the coaches have been, have been talking about it and they'd be in favor of it. Um, I think anything that, that gets us out there um, nationally, um, you know, to be recognized and to be out there with the rest of the, of the country has been good for us. Um, you know, but again, being fairly new, uh, we haven't really delved too much into that. But I know that the coaches and players talk about it um, and, and, you know, what, where we may end up with it, I'm not sure. One of the, one of the reasons it came up is what's happened at, at Orno with Maine going uh, to the to the playoffs, hosting a game, and then winning a game on the road, and now going and playing in the semifinals, it brings incredible notoriety to the school. And those pockets of places, people say, well, these, these, this is a pretty interesting team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all that stuff that you want as an administrator. Sure. Uh, that's, what, that's how we developed a, the discussion about it. We said, well, the Ivy League doesn't go, and I knew that Nescag didn't go. Yeah. It's, um, you, you know, it's interesting because I think <clears throat> if you if you asked, uh, you know, 100 people, uh, you know, where the national rowing champion came from in women's rowing, you know, and they didn't really know the sport, I, I doubt they would say Maine, right? And certainly not, not Bates College. Um, so I think that anything we can do to get out there, and that, that goes yep. to your point about the football team up in, in Orono, you know, to bring notoriety into what we're doing is is going to be a positive, especially if we're putting putting out a good a good product, which I think we will be doing. Um, you know, our league is 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 nationally known in pretty much everything. Um, you know, uh, not football, uh, maybe not one or two other sports, but um, you know, I think that the coaches and the, and the players would love to uh, to get to that point. I think for us, we want to get to that point in in other sports. Um, you know, we have not historically. You know, been winning the national championships in some of those other team sports that our other other schools are, as you know, as evidenced by Bowden and Amherst in in women's basketball, or Williams in women's soccer, or Tufts in men's soccer. And you know, every year and every week, you know, what I what I explain to some of my friends who aren't from around the area and don't really know Division Three that well, and say that we are in, you know, the SEC or the ACC of Division Three. It's ev- there is no day off here. It, there's no easy games. There's no easy victories because you're playing nationally ranked teams every week so for us you know football our first you know uh, mission i would say for football is not necessarily to get us to the ncas to get us you know more competitive in the league but for our other sports that do have the opportunity to go we need to get more competitive there so that we're challenging these other teams as opposed to just kind of helping their strength of schedule and then going back to football real quick the nescag is interesting there's kind of an air of mystery of how good NESCAC is maybe compared to other Division Three conferences because you know, Ivy League, Yale played Maine this year. Right. NESCAC schools don't play non-conference games. Right. So, like, right. <laughs> there yeah. you go outside the Tough conference. Uh, we did add, true. NESCAC did add a ninth game two years ago, which was a change. It used to be yep. eight games. You used to not play every team. Now they do. So changes have happened recently with a ninth game, and maybe that's the first step. That was for, huge. Yeah. That was, from what I – I mean, that, that happened right as I got here. Yeah. And that was absolutely huge. And I know the coaches would love to play – non-conference games depending on which school you're in sure. because there are there are a lot of schools right here in New England and right here in Maine that they sure. could be really competitive with. Yeah. So definitely will be something interesting to keep an eye on, I guess. Uh, you know, heading into January, Jason, obviously skiing season uh, going to get underway the second week of January. We have Alpine and Nordic skiing at Bates. And, boy, Michaela and, and Becky, the, the, those those two might be the busiest coaches at Bates, or at least the ones who can't be on campus the most because they're always with their teams, whether they'll be up on the yeah. mountain or doing the Nordic uh, skiing and stuff. So, um, you know, in terms of skiing and whatnot, obviously Bates – we, they compete against the best of the best, Division yep. One schools. Yep. Uh, what are your impressions of our skiing programs? I mean, it's, it's last year sending two uh, skiers to nationals was re- really good, I think, for everyone. Yeah. Oh, the, this, the, these teams are so impressive, and they are, um, you know,
you know, they're kind of unsung a little bit, right? Because they are, you know, more individual sports. Their their practice and their competitions are off campus, so you have to make an effort. These these, these students go, you know, they balance everything else they're doing, and yeah. then you know, our Alpine team is training up at Sunday River, and I went up there. I mean, you know, that's a good hour away, right? You know, and it's not it's not like you just hop on the highway and get up there an hour. You're going over the <laughs> river and through the woods, right? So um, they're really really dedicated, and it's great to see. Uh, Michaela and Becky, our coaches, um, you know, have a great relationship with the team, and um, and they're really they're really starting to uh, get a little more notoriety, which is good. You know, we just started the season, and uh, on the men's side, we had a race this uh, Friday or Thursday, um, and and had good results. But we're going to host uh, NCAA regionals, which we've done uh, every couple of years, from what I understand. We didn't do it my first year last year, but we're going to have that at the end of February, and hopefully, um, and it comes up right at the end of our break. So I'm hoping we'll be able to uh, do a great event up there. We're working with our our advancement team to try and and do some kind of banquet or gala up there um, so we can bring the teams, bring the families, bring the fans, um, and have a really cool atmosphere. Obviously, um, we're excited that, um, you know, Dinos is is, uh, left the latest is back in school, our Olympian from, uh, he got all that notoriety on, you know, NBC and the opening ceremonies, carrying the flag, all that stuff. So it's nice to have him him back on campus. And it's it's been kind of funny because I've been walking with him and people look at him and they kind of know, that guy looks familiar, but they don't know where they know him from, you know. They're not talking about you, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not me. It's definitely not me. Um, you know, I'm, listen, I'm glad. It's a good thing I put on a proper outfit here today. I didn't know we were going to be streaming live yeah. on the video, you know. Yeah, simulcast. My face for radio yeah. was not preparing that. <laughs> no. It, it's like the, uh, the old Mike and Mike show where they would simulcast on ESPN Eight, the Ocho right, or whatever. Right, right. Yeah. But uh, that Bates Carnival will be February 22nd and February 23. Again, that, that, and as you mentioned, it's Bates Carnival plus it's also the NCAA East Regional. So you get a few more competitors in there who are trying to qualify uh, for nationals and everything. So, yeah, yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a good season for them, I hope. That'll be great. That'll be in Nordic and Alpine hosted. Um, in the area, I suppose, if you can say, not quite on campus, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely add, have that fully. They're, covered they're trying as well. to get me on skis. I don't know if that's going to be good, <laughs> good for anybody. Was, I, I took the ski lift uh, a, few, uh, Did you? a couple years ago, uh, and that story. was that was scary enough that's for fun. me. Yeah, I don't need to actually get on the skis themselves. <laughs> well, you know, they're actually working at Sunday River now to build a new like high speed uh, tow. That does tow not lift. need to go faster, and it's it's something that it's just like you grab on like a tow rope kind uh-huh. of thing, and yeah. and it zips you up there, and like because that's a really big lift. That one that you know it could take. I don't know, ten or eleven minutes to get all the way yes. to the top, and now it's going to do it in like four when this is built. Wow. So, okay, interesting. Yeah. So even that scares me. Never mind actually skiing down. Yeah, I'm not sure if going faster would be less scary or more scary. Up on that <laughs> not quite well, sure. Less time to be scared. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, Jason, anything else going on right now at Bates that you wanted to talk about in terms of you know some initiatives the athletic department's doing and everything? Sure. You know, we're uh, obviously you know we're in the thick of things right now, but we're keeping our projects that that have been running in the background that that are not necessarily tied right to competition. Um, you know, we're continuing to renovate spaces. We're uh, we're actually going to renovate Alumni Gym. I'm sure you've seen that that started to, uh, you know, some of those old old plaques have started to come off the wall. People are going, where are those plaques going? But we're di- oh. digitizing all of the, uh, you know, um, senior citation kind of Hall of Fame kind of stuff. And we're, we're working on a new project there. And, you know, Coach, you talked about recruitment. And, um, you know, for us... It, where we kind of renovate our spaces and in what order really works towards like our recruitment, you know, strategy. So that alumni gym is where we meet all of the new recruits, all the new families that come in. There's a little lounge area there where they sit to, to greet us. So I think that's important that that space say, hey, beyond these doors, something great's happening. And we've got the new gym and we've got the new you know, renovated Thompson room and some of the locker rooms and things like that. So we're looking at capital improvements really, really heavily right now. Um, it's a matter of where do we prioritize and where do donors come from. But, um, you know, we're, we're looking at pretty much either renovating or replacing you know, a lot of our locker spaces, our fitness centers, our um, weight room, our, our sports medicine space, um, because sports medicine and, and athletic performance has has changed so much since those facilities were built. And it's not just about having a weight room or a fitness center with cardio, you know, equipment in it. It's about having performance space where you can work and do total, you know, kind of cross training and, 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 and be fit. So, uh, so we're looking at that. I wrote a, the, the coach at Connecticut college asked me to write something to the athletic director and the president, uh, because I'd been to all the NESCAC schools and, and, you know, kids decide where to go to school for a lot of different reasons. But the one constant in NESCAC is they're all good academic schools. So why does one distinguish itself from another? I mean, it's location, it's, but it's facilities. You know, if you, 
if you've got good facilities and kids feel really good about being on campus or in in the facilities, in the gym, in the locker rooms, um, which is what a tour is all about, you go mm-hmm. around and see all those things, they say, you know, I could, I can feel this, I can see myself here, and it does make a difference. It absolutely it, does. It really does. And, you know, Coach, it's a great point, and to be honest, um, you know, we, um, we're behind in that, in that area, you know, as far as the re- uh, some, a lot of the rest of the league, and we know that, and we recognize it, and now it's a matter of coming up with a strategy, uh, you know, to, to, to upgrade those facilities, but we also know, you know, we don't have uh, the endowment of some of the other institutions, we don't have the donors of some of the institu- other institutions, so we need to be a little more creative with what we do, and we talk to the coaches about that a lot as well, because when, it, when a recruit does come on campus, um, you know, uh, they 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 may be wowed by the feel of an alumni gym or or the way that some of our kind of older facilities you know speak to them. But really, the coaches you know and that relationship that they have sure. with the coaches and the relationship they have with the folks when they get on campus is is you know we have to we have to work a little bit harder. And the truth is, I've said this to the coaches and I've said it to to recruits when they've asked me to meet with them and their families. You know, it's it's not it's not hard to. You, know, you could get used to pretty quickly to, you know, like, oh, I can live in Brunswick and walk around Bowdoin. Like, oh, yeah, that's kind of easy. You know, we always say you got to be a little more gritty and a little tougher to kind of kind of kind of cut it in, in the loo, right, in, in Lewiston, as we call it. So I think that um, the relationship that our coaches build with those recruits, going out there and looking for, you know, students that really appreciate coming to a school like Bates and seeing what Bates has to offer and not saying, oh, I'm not growing up saying I want to go to a NESCAC school. And being, you know, what we would call an SCAC shopper and then saying, OK, well, I'm going to try. So because then if you go and just look at, at the house yeah, and you go, OK, well, I'll pick that one first. I'll say, Let's see if I can go Williams, Amherst, whatever. And then, oh, Bates will tell you, OK, I'll go to Bates. So I think that that's not what we're looking for. And I think that we want students that really can kind of embrace, you know, the potential of what we're trying to do. It was a tough week for the Bates basketball teams with the men losing by just two points to Husson on Tuesday before falling to Bowdoin and Colby in non-conference action later in the week. Meanwhile, the women lost a tight one to Colby on Tuesday before falling to number one nationally ranked Bowdoin on Saturday. Fortunately for the Bobcats, they'll get a chance to get back on track later this month when the men travel to Staten Island and the women travel to Springfield, Massachusetts. Both teams will get two more non-conference games under their belts before NASCAC play starts on Friday, January 4. Next time on the Bates Bobcast, the students are taking finals, so we'll sit down with the president of Bates College, Clayton Spencer, to talk all things Bates sports. Then we'll have a quick break for the holidays before returning in January when we'll preview the skiing and track and field seasons. All that and more in the upcoming weeks on the Bates Bobcast. Bates, Bates, my